Hello my friends. Farming is not only affected by mammals like wild rabbits, wild pigs or rats. Every year, Australian farmers and ranchers suffer significant damage from millions of wild birds from the parrot family. Currently, there are 56 species of parrots living in most areas of Australia with an estimated number of more than 17 million individuals. Among them are the Galar cockatoo, the sulphur crested cockatoo, a rainbow lorikeet and the butcherigar and these are some of the most popular parrot breeds on the continent. There are flocks of parrots that number in the dozens and even hundreds and they can appear where you live. In addition, to making annoying noises. They can also harm crops such as grain crops, fruit trees and nut trees. In addition, parrots can also nest in inappropriate places like the recesses of your roof. Having dozens of parrots in your backyard also causes pollution due to the hundreds of piles or droppings they leave behind. These are Galar cockatoos. They are believed to be the most numerous of all parrots living on mainland Australia. In the wild, the Galar is found in a wide variety of habitats, from arid hinterlands to wooded areas. In addition, this bird is also commonly seen in urban and suburban areas of cities. This is a cattle ranch in Maranoa County, southwest Queensland. Around this area is also a home to a flock of Galar cockatoos, with a number of nearly 300. Galars often have a habit of eating grass and nuts. Each day, hundreds of Galars often fly to this farm in search of water and food. Unfortunately, this is usually used for livestock and includes corn as well as some other seeds. The appearance of these noisy birds causes a lot of discomfort to the people working on this cattle farm. They not only appear around cattle and poultry farms though, galahs also frequently form large flocks and fly to fields of wheat or barley to feed. Galars are often attracted to crops that are in the milk or pass stage. As soon as the seeding process is completed, these noisy birds may emerge to eat some kind of seed. Imagine what happens when you have a field of wheat ready to be harvested, when suddenly hundreds of galars come from nowhere to enjoy a free meal on your dime. In the northern parts of Australia, the breeding phase of the galah takes place from July to December each year. And in the southern regions, the breeding period for this bird usually lasts from February to July. During each breeding season of a cockatoo pair, usually only two to three eggs are successfully hatched. However, once a young bird is an adult, they can live up to 25 years in the wild, or up to 70 years when kept as pets. If you start keeping a galah as a pet right now, chances are you'll be the one to say goodbye to this world sooner than your pet. It is estimated that there are more than 4 million galahs living in the entire territory of Australia. Each year, this noisy bird cost Australian grain farmers about $173 million in damage to their crops. To control the population of galahs, some localities in Australia have used measures such as culling or trapping. All controls must be in place in accordance with Australian wildlife laws to ensure that these birds are treated humanely. It is estimated that adopting measures to control the galahs 
cost the Australian government nearly $4 million a year. If you are an Australian like me, tell us what negative impact the Galahs have had on your life. In addition to the Galahs, budgies are also a parrot species found in abundance in Australia and the negative impact this small bird has on agriculture in this country is significant. In the wild, budgies usually live in flocks of about 100 individuals. However, the number of budgies in the flock can increase to several thousand after the rainy season ends. The reason for the rapid increase in the number of budgies in a flock after the rainy season is at this time the rapid growth of vegetation provides more food and nesting material. As a small bird that lives in flocks, budgies have always been considered the favourite prey of birds of prey such as falcons. In most areas of Australia, in the places where budgies live, are also home to flocks of falcons. However, with an estimated population of nearly 5 million, the impact of birds of prey on the number of budgies in Australia is negligible. It is estimated that only about 1.3% of budgies in Australia die each year due to the impact of predators and other factors such as disease or hunting. In most areas of Australia, the breeding season for budgies usually lasts from September to February of the following year. However, this bird can also completely stop breeding for a year if the weather conditions are too dry or there is a lack of nesting material. After about six to seven weeks, these young birds will be ready to leave the nest and after each breeding season, the number in a colony of budgies usually increases to about 13 to 17 times the original number. Like most other parrot species in Australia, budgies also have a habit of eating nuts and grains. A flock of parrots with hundreds or even thousands of them will cause significant damage to fields of wheat or sorghum that are about to enter the harvest period. In addition, fruit farms such as bananas or mangoes are also a favourite place for a flock of budgies. In the wild, adult budgies need to drink water at least seven times per day. Therefore, small water holes in arid regions of Australia are often the place where you can easily see the appearance of these small birds. In some cases where budgies cause damage to crops or other resources, Australian landowners or agricultural authorities may take measures such as trapping, scaring or shooting to control the populations. Overall, the impact of millions of parrots in Australia on agriculture is quite significant, especially on small farms. However, compared with other pests such as feral pigs or wild rabbits, the impact of parrots in Australia on agriculture is only a very, very small part. Hello my friends. Today we are going to the deserts and arid regions of the Western United States to see how farming and ranching work here. In the United States, Arid lands and deserts are mainly found in states such as Nevada, Eastern California, Western Utah, Idaho and Oregon. In recent years, the temperature differences between day and night in desert areas in the United States has always been quite high. In particular, 
in the Great Basin Desert in Nevada, temperatures can drop from 87 degrees Fahrenheit during the day to 13 degrees Fahrenheit at night. It is estimated that by 2021, about 799 million acres of land in the United States is considered desert, accounting for 33% of the country's area. Of course, this statistic includes both arid and semi-arid regions. Currently, there are about 289,000 active farms in the Western United States, of which about 37% of these farms are located in arid or semi-arid lands. Due to the extremes of this climate, crop farming in the arid regions of the United States is not as productive as ranching or livestock farming. Common crops grown in arid regions include alfalfa, potatoes or wheat. The first place we will visit in this video is the state of Arizona, where up to 63% of the land is desert, arid and semi-arid. These two farmers are establishing a nice pasture to raise poultry right in the desert. This is a small ranch located in the town of Whitman, about 35 miles northwest of Phoenix, Arizona. At this desert farm, about 30 adult turkeys are being raised for meat. In addition, they are also considered close friends for this farmer couple. Every morning, dozens of turkeys will leave the coop and roam freely around the farm. Of course, their range is limited by the fence system, which helps to prevent the turkeys from moving too far away from the farm. In addition to turkeys, pigs are also animals raised on this six acre farm. The number of pigs raised in the barn at this farm is always maintained at 50 to 20 heads. Every day, the pigs here will be fed twice in the morning and late afternoon, with mainly corn. In addition, leaves are also used to enrich the diet of this herd. Due to living in these conditions and often being free to run around, the quality of pork at these farms is always much higher than those of pigs raised on the factory farms. These ranches don't only farm pigs and turkeys. To add to the diversity, there are animals such as ducks, chickens and geese. After about six weeks from being hatched, this small desert grassland is ready to welcome the chickens to live and feed. Of course, with a fairly modest area, the number of chickens raised at this farm is not too many. According to the USDA statistics, by 2022, about 57% of the total 20,300 farms in Arizona will be located in desert, arid and semi-arid lands. The agricultural industry in Arizona generates about $4.1 billion in revenue each year and its impact on the state's economy is about $23.3 billion. Next, we will travel to the arid regions of the Mojave Desert in southeastern California and parts of Nevada to see how thousands of sheep here are raised. Unlike the sheep raised in California's Central Valley region, these desert raised sheep roam all day long across barren lands in search of scarce food. In fact, the amount of food that sheep consume is much less than that of other livestock, so they are considered more suitable for living and surviving in these desert and arid lands. 
Cattle are often raised in semi-arid areas, where the climate is less extreme and natural food sources are more abundant. On average, each sheep can travel about 2.3 miles per day in search of food. With a flock of about 100 sheep, ranchers need a minimum of 31 acres of pasture to rotate for the sheep to graze on. Even in areas with harsh climatic conditions and low amounts of natural grass, ranchers will still need about 50 acres of pasture to feed 100 sheep. According to USDA statistics, by 2021, in the United States, there are about 84,000 sheep farms in operation and about 71% of sheep farms are located in western states. In particular, California is the state with the largest number of sheep farms in the western states, with about 423 farms. Each year, sheep farms in the western United States generate $931 million in revenue from sheep sales. This revenue does not include the revenue from wool, milk and other products of the millions of sheep. When talking about livestock farms in the arid west, we cannot ignore horse farms with a scale of tens to hundreds of animals in Montana, Oregon or California. In particular, with more than 42,000 wild horses living there, another state in the western United States, Nevada, is home to the most amount of wild horses in the country. The number of wild horses living in Nevada today accounts for 51% of the country's wild horses. Wild horses living in arid and semi-arid regions often compete directly with livestock for food. This is also the main reason why they are considered a problem for US agriculture. The most common animal that roams the arid lands of the western United States are cattle. According to the National Agricultural Statistics Service, as of January 2023, the number of cattle raised on farms in the western United States was approximately 27.3 million heads, representing 29% of the national cattle and calf population. Different from goats and sheep farms, livestock ranches in arid regions need more land for each of their livestock. Specifically, a herd of cattle and calves of about 100 will need at least 180 acres of land to rotate grazing upon. Even the area of land for grazing will be larger if the climate in that area is too harsh or if there is too little natural grass. In general, most farming and livestock farming in the arid regions of the western United States is fraught with difficulties in terms of water availability, foraging, and heat stress of animals.